Hey Taryn, uh, I thought I would make a video to show you one way that you might accomplish the, uh, the goal that you asked me in your email. So if I understand correctly, um, one of the things you said here, I'll just come over here, you said, hey, um, when you're teaching us variables and you have the code choose a random number, is a way for the code to choose between a random sprite. I was trying to do that for my classroom introduction but couldn't figure it out for context. I wanted to have a gallery of drawings I made when the student typed a certain thing, it would pull a random drawing to appear. That is a great question. I think this is actually uh, could be a fun project this way. So let's suppose what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to have my sprite. And let's say that when I click on the sprite, uh, I'll have an image appear over here on the right. So let me go ahead and just plan that out. I'm going to say right now, uh, my purpose, um, my overall purpose, let's see if I can type this is to um, demonstrate how to use, how to choose a random drawing from a list of drawings. So that's my overall goal or purpose. The way that I want to do that, let's say that uh, when I click on this sprite, I'm going to choose a random number. I'm going to set my variable to that random number. Random number. And then I'm going to send a message to change picture. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do on this main sprite. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. So let's go ahead and just code that right now. And I'll put up here as a demo, say change picture demo. And let's say if I wanted to do that, I'm going to go over to events and say when this sprite is clicked, uh, I want to choose a random number. So if I go over to operators, I can pull out this pick random. Let's pick 10 things, one to 10. And let's go to variables and at the same time, we'll do one and two. When we create a new variable, I'm going to rename the one that's here by right clicking and say rename my variable. I'm just going to call it uh, this number. So this number will change depending on uh, what the new number is that I put in there, right? So I'm going to grab the very first block that says set this number. So I'll say set this number instead of setting it to zero or something fixed, I'm going to set it to this random, okay? And just so that I can see what's happening while I develop, I'm going to click on the checkbox next to this number so that it appears on the screen so I can kind of keep track of what's going on there, right? Uh, and then after that, all I have to do is go to events, find my broadcast. I'm going to broadcast a message and say, it's time to change the picture. Okay, so I'm sending a message, change the picture to other sprites, right? Now there's several ways of accomplishing what you've asked. I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way. Uh, this, it, it'll work for probably most situations. But if you wanted all of your sprites that appear to have different um, code on them and to behave differently, you might do this different. I'm assuming right now that the picture that appears is going to behave the same. And if that's the case, the best thing to do is to create a single sprite and give it different costumes. So let me show you how I might do that. Over here and choose a sprite. I'm going to choose a new sprite. And let's say I'm just going to choose the ball right here. So I'm going to choose this ball sprite. Now what I'm going to do over here on the ball, I'm going to go up to costumes. And when you click on costumes, you notice the ball already has several different costumes, right? I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this a yellow ball. Uh, we'll call this a blue ball. This next one. Oh, if it'll let me. There you go. I'll say blue ball. Click on the next one. Uh, we'll call this a fuchsia ball. I don't know if I misspelled fuchsia there. Call this one a green ball. And we're going to call this a purple ball. Okay, so now I've got these several different balls, and they're named in a way that helps me remember them, but they're all part of a single sprite. I did say 1 to 10, so I'll actually, actually choose new costumes for this sprite as well. I'll choose some other costumes. I'll choose an apple. Uh, let's see, we'll choose bananas. And actually with bananas, I think I'm going to say a bunch of bananas. And if we go search some more, we've got we've got other balls in here. So we've got a baseball. Um, let's see, we've got a basketball, and we 
of other balls. This comes up. Um, we've got a beach ball. And there's 10 things right there. I kind of feel like the apple and the bananas should be balls as well, but it is what it is. Let's, uh, right now, I'll go back to my code, and I've got the balls. I'm going to kind of place it in the middle of the screen. In fact, I'm going to, let's say that when I start off right here, I'm going to create my initialization code. So I'll say set location and uh, set visibility. Let's say when I first start, I want this to be invisible. So if I go to looks, I'm going to grab a hide. So right at the beginning, that'll hide. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to put it right in the middle of the screen. Because who knows, maybe when it appears, I'll make the ball bounce or something like that. Uh, but by clicking on this, now I've set it up to appear in the middle and actually be hidden. So the other thing I'm going to want the ball to do then uh, right now is I am I need to handle the message that I get, right? So let me go to events and grab when I receive the change the picture message. So I'm going to say add a comment. When I receive change picture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say change my costume to the current number. Uh, so that'll be, or then I think I called it new number. Yeah, if I like right there, or this number. Change the current my costume to this number. Uh, and then I'm actually going to say the costume name. So I can show you how I can get information about the costume. I can get both the number of the costume and the name of the costume. That's kind of handy. So I'm just going to, right now, I'm going to say, go to looks and grab a switch costume two. And instead of switching to any specific costumes, I'm going to switch to the variable number that I generated. So I'm going to go grab that variable, this number, and you notice it fits right there in the beach ball where it says switch costume to, right? So now it's going to switch costume to this number. And just to say what costume I have, I'm going to go to looks, grab a say block, and I'm going to say the name of my costume. And if you scroll down on this very same looks category, you can see the, at the bottom, there's three built-in variables. One of them is the size, one other is the backdrop, and the other is the costume. I'm going to grab the costume out of there. And right now, it's going to say the costume number. That's not as helpful for me because I know the costume number. What I want to do is I want to change it to the costume name. And so this shows you how I can use both on the costumes. Each costume has a number, one, two, three, four, and so on. And each costume has a name. And I can use those to my advantage. So uh, let me show you how this works right now. If I were to click on the green flag, uh, maybe if I go back to my sprite, uh, it should give some instructions. So maybe the, uh, I'll just say uh, give instructions. So my cat is gonna plant, tell people what to do. Uh, the cat will say something like, click me to see a ball or something like that. So I'll say looks and the cat will say, Click on me to get a new ball. I'll say that for three seconds. So pretty simple. I'm going to click on the cat. I'll start this over. Cat says click on me to get a new ball. I'm going to click on the cat. And the ball, it looks like, if you can see over here, it changed the image. It didn't appear because I forgot that we had hidden it. I need to go into looks and make sure to show that after I switch the costume. Uh, so... And before I say anything, because if it's still hiding when I say something, we're still not going to see it. So now if I click on it, you can see it says purple ball. In fact, let me change it so that it actually says uh, more of a sentence. It'll say, instead of just saying the costume name, it'll say something like, I'm a, and then it'll say whatever it is. Now if I click on it, it says, I'm a purple ball, I'm an apple, I'm a basketball, I'm a beach ball. Sometimes it looks like it's not changing just because it's just randomly chosen the same number. And actually, random numbers will often do that. You often get the same number three or four times in a row. So you can see there, that is one of the ways that you might actually uh, just use one sprite with multiple costumes. And you can change what it looks like on the screen. Uh, and you can even change what it's saying by using the name of the costume. Um, I've actually used something exactly like this to create uh, a name picker for students in the class to call on students or a game uh, for me to memorize the pictures and names of the students in my class where it'll randomly uh, switch the costume to one of their pictures and then I have to type in their name and 
my program then checks if their name is the same as the costume name. And if I've gotten it right, then it tells me you got it right. So there's lots of uses for this. This is a really great question you asked. It's not too complicated. You see all we're really doing is choosing a random number and changing the costume to that number. Uh, at its very core, that's all that we had to do. I added these extra things to make it just a little bit more useful, but all you really need to do is choose a random number, change the costume to that random number. Hopefully this is helpful.